The all-new Actions panel allows the user to fully customise what features are displayed, allowing them to favourite commonly used actions or to hide those that are rarely needed. Users can create their own actions using macro scripts, and additional edit screens and plugin UIs can now be launched directly from within the panel, keeping all your common tools in one place. There's a lot more to the Actions panel, so let's dive in and take a look. To get started, we'll need to open Waveform's browser. To achieve this, we can use Waveform 10's new view manager by clicking the icon top right of the screen. Here we can hide or show any part of our edit, including the browser. Alternatively, we can hover our mouse over the left part of the screen to bring the browser into view. Or simply hit the B key on the keyboard. Once open, be sure that the Actions tab is selected. Here we see the default actions for the entire edit. We can tell these actions relate to the edit by the little edit button at the top of the panel. If we click on a track, you'll notice the panel adapts to show the actions that relate to the track. A small track button is now visible and we can quickly make changes to the track properties. Changing the name or color. Muting or soloing is also super quick and easy. If I click on the track input, again the actions panel adapts and we can quickly adjust input gain, rename the input, monitor the level and more. Clicking on a plugin brings up its properties and actions as expected. And clicking on a MIDI clip does the same. It's great how we can quickly rename, recolor, adjust the velocity, quantize and apply grooves directly from the actions panel. Now if we click back on the track, you'll notice that all buttons are visible at the top of the panel. Edit, Track, Input, Clip and Plugin. We can quickly navigate through these to access any action or property without leaving the Actions panel. These options are directly related to the selected item, in this case the track. For example, if we click on a track, click the Clip button and then raise the gain, You'll notice the gain is raised for every clip that resides on that track. Group operations like these are made really quick and easy with the Actions panel. So all of that's pretty impressive, but we haven't even started customising things yet. And that's where the Actions panel truly shines. Here we'll take a look at favouriting, hiding and general customization. At the top right of the panel, there are three buttons, and these represent different viewing options. With the field star selected, all of our favourites are brought into view. With the star outline selected, all actions are displayed except those that have been hidden. And with the eye icon selected, all actions are shown, including those that have been hidden. With the star outline selected, we can go through and quickly favourite some of these actions by simply clicking on it and filling a star. A field star means the action has been favourited, and if we navigate back to our favourites view, you'll notice that the actions that we just favourited now appear in our list. If there are actions listed in our favourites we'd prefer not to see, these can be hidden by simply right-clicking on the star. By spending just a few minutes, you can quickly create an actions panel tailored to your needs. Perhaps the most rewarding thing about customising favourites is the ability to recall them with a key command. In the Settings panel, I've assigned the Show Favourites Actions menu command to the keyboard shortcut Shift plus F. Now when executed back in my edit, my favourites pop up right next to the mouse cursor. And these favourites adapt to whatever element in the edit is selected. For example, click on a clip, hold Shift plus F and we're shown our clip favourites, making it super quick and easy to rename, colour or adjust gain. The Tool button in the Compact Toolbar behaves in a similar way, allowing you to access your favourites at the click of a button. If I click on a track and click the Tool icon, all of my favourites for the track are listed. Like the Actions panel, it adapts depending on what element is selected. If I now click on a clip and go back to the Tool icon, you'll notice that my clip favourites are now displayed. If you're still craving further customization, user macros, advanced actions and keyboard shortcuts can also be added to the Actions panel via the Add Macro menu at the bottom. 
Simply click to add, and once listed in the Actions panel, they can also be added to your favorites, ensuring a lightning fast workflow. The Actions panel also introduces several UI and UX improvements. Plugins, mappings, faceplates, and more can now be launched directly from the Actions panel and are now displayed in their own floating windows. Another benefit of using the Actions panel is that it easily allows you to work with a compact user toolbar. Key functionality from the Properties panel can still be quickly accessed by clicking the tool icon. As we discovered earlier, this adapts to whatever element in your edit is selected. Other important features like tempo, time signature, and key can be adjusted with a simple click. I hope you found the information in this tutorial useful. By spending just a few minutes customizing the Actions panel, you'll be able to speed up your workflow dramatically. Thanks for watching.